Today on The Real Story, an extended interview with Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont as state lawmakers prepare for a special session to take up his plan to bring back highway tolls in Connecticut. Tolls for tractor trailers only, not for cars or box trucks or buses. How's the governor feeling about his chances? We're going to ask him. Also on his mind, the budget deficit that will have to be dealt with in the regular session starting next month. The deficit, very small. So why is he talking about emergency budget cuts? What emergency? What spending cuts? We're going to talk about it all. Also, is he still willing to push marijuana legalization? How about free college tuition? It's all today on The Real Story. Hi there, you're watching The Real Story. I'm Al Terzi alongside Jen Bernstein. She's back. I'm back. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Uh, good morning so much to everyone at home. Well, might state lawmakers take a vote as early as this week on whether to bring back highway tolls in Connecticut? It was one of Ned Lamont's signature campaign proposals when he ran for governor in 2018 as a way to pay for roads and bridges and other transportation improvements. But shortly after he took office, the road to possible enactment of tolls suddenly turned very bumpy. So what are the chances that a tolls bill will be passed after all. Governor Le Ned Lamont, uh, welcome to The Real Story, and thanks for being here hey, this Jen. morning. Hey, Jen. Hey, Al. So we're hearing possibly that they're going to get called back into session next week. Uh, the legislature would be doing that, but what are you hearing from legislative leaders? Uh, I hope you're right. That's up to the legislative leadership. The good news is that everybody knows how important it is that we fix our transportation system, speed up our rail, end the gridlock on our highways. As Al uh, graciously pointed out, there's been a little bit of a dispute about how you pay for this. Uh, Republicans wanted to do more borrowing or take it from the rainy day fund. And I wanted to use uh, tr uh, tolling on tractor trailer trucks, 40% of which would be paid for by out-of-staters. I think we're going to get that passed this month. Now, uh, this new bill, does it require use of uh, any of the rainy day money? No. I think that was a lousy idea. We haven't had a recession in 10 years. Uh, this is no time for us to be raiding the rainy day fund. You know why it's there? If we do have a downturn, well, I won't have to uh, cut services for the poor. I won't have to raise taxes. Hopefully, we'll be able to power through, assuming it's a normal recession. This budget or this bill, this tolls bill, have you seen it yet? Is it the legislative leaders crafting it before they bring it out next week? Yeah, we've uh, pretty much got that done. They, uh, the leadership has got it. They're looking at it. It's going to the members, so everybody is going to see exactly what it is. Modeled very closely after Rhode Island, by the way, Jen. They've had a, a, a tolls on tractor trailers there for a couple of years now. Along the way, you had a, a plan where tolls were going to be on bridges. Does this include bridge tolls and highway tolls, or what? It's on bridges. All, all on and the bridges. tolls are specific to fixing that bridge. They go to pay off the loans we get from the uh, Trump Department of Transportation at historically low interest rates. This is the time for us to fix our transportation system. Do you think there's going to be an issue of trucks trying to avoid the tolls and then going on to secondary roads and clogging up traffic there? Uh, a, it's illegal. B, it's not happening in Rhode Island. And C, we're going to make sure it doesn't happen. That's a ticketable offense if you do that. What is happening in Rhode Island is this lawsuit with truckers. How does Connecticut combat that? If it, you know, um, we've it's been talked a lot before. to Rhode Island. Look, everybody's suing in this day and age. They sued Rhode Island some years ago. Uh, the feds are continuing to make the payments. The court system is going to rule on this. They'll rule on Rhode Island's uh, favor. There's no interstate commerce issue there. And in the meantime, the Trump administration continues to provide uh, transportation funding for Rhode Island. So you're pretty confident that Connecticut could win a lawsuit if it if it came up, or We're was confident. it able to be pushed We're very the lawsuit confident. aside? Yep. All right, so uh, you don't know yet. When will you know when the special session is going to be? I know you'll know when you know, but when do you think it'll be? I do not predict on behalf of the <laughs> legislative leadership. I've made that mistake before. But uh, I've, I've heard from both uh, the House and Senate uh, Democratic leadership. They're ready to bring this to a vote. Governor Lamont, I know you know you took a lot of questions when you did the radio WTIC with Joe D'Ambrosio and everything like that in the morning. There were a lot of people who um, are not happy about tolls being implemented, and there's a lot of mistrust about political leaders and the use of public money. How are you letting people know that it's going to go to those bridges and not eventually? Well, be a, it goes there by law. 
you know, we have an agreement with the Federal Department of Transportation. They give us a 27-year note. That money goes to fix uh, the Gold Star Bridge. And when that uh, is paid off, either the gantries go down or whatever the terms of the agreement are. I've got to give people confidence. I'm the first guy that comes out of business in this uh, state as a governor in many years. I'm making sure this money's invested and the money goes where it's uh, promised to go. Well, you have uh, people looking at, you know, your campaign where you said it, it was going to be trucks only like Rhode Island and so on. And then you got into office. And how long after that was it that you discovered it wasn't going to bring the revenue that you expected? And yeah, then... the people, I, I, I gave an address. We said, let's do 30, 30, 30, high speed coming from uh, Hartford to New Haven to Stanford. Everybody cheered. We knew what we had to do to do that. I said we needed seven or eight hundred million dollars to get that done. And so did the Republicans. They had a plan called Prioritize Progress, Al, where they were going to borrow $700 million a year to do that. And you didn't and want that because... Because we're, we're, we're in debt up to our eyeballs. We're addicted to debt. Borrowing is just another way of taxing people with interest, 100% paid for by the people of Connecticut. I thought that was not a good idea. So anyway, so the Republicans and I, we both pulled back and went for something more scaled back. I ended up with a trucks-only tolling. All right, so you... Uh... You know, you got, now we've got this grassroots organization, Patrick Sasser's groups. No, yeah. no total CT out there. And, uh, and what happened in your case was the reason why that even came into existence. How do you feel the public uh, views you now, knowing that you came in proposing this tolls thing, you didn't know that you weren't going to get the... And they're wondering why you didn't know. Uh, why didn't you know that you wouldn't have enough revenue if you did trucks only? Well, um... I know exactly what the revenues we need. And we've got enough in our plan right now to bring our, our roads and bridges up to a state of good repair, full safety, which is really important, enough to speed up our rail and get those uh, cars off the road, more people using rail service, open up access to Waterbury, which is a bit of a dead end, how infrequent their rail is, open up Shoreline East with better service, not to mention Hartford down to New Haven. So we've got the revenues in place necessary to do that and take advantage of a incredibly low cost financing uh, from the federal government. You don't want to waste this opportunity. And by the way, every business leader I have talked to has said this is so key to economic growth and development. You want this economy to start growing again, right. fix your transportation system. I'm curious, we talked one year ago right after you had gotten inaugurated and I had asked what do you think the hardest part about being governor is so far? And if I recall, one of your uh, answers was just you didn't realize kind of the intricacies of the of the legislature and all you had to do to get things done. Is that still the case to this day? Has it been hard to kind of navigate or a learning experience to navigate the halls there? I think the easiest thing to do in politics is to do nothing. Uh, is to uh, wait, study it, how about a consultant, let's think about it and put it off, especially if it's a decision that um, is a tough decision. And uh, look, I just turned 66, so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in a big boat. I'm in a rush. I like to get things going. I don't want to put it off any longer. So you're right. I think I was pushing pretty hard in the legislature to make a decision that they just assumed they could put it off for a little bit. But they're not. They're stepping up. They're making this uh, uh, vote, and we're going to turn this uh, state around by getting our transportation system moving again. Now, if this plan is enacted, will it have to be in stages? Will you do one bridge at a time, or... So how many gantries are you going to have? We're going to have uh, 12 gantries. 12, yeah. Uh, the Trump administration is going to give us money up front in anticipation of us getting the gantries so we can get going in a couple years. The gantries probably won't be up for uh, two or three years. We'll know what the legal situation is in Rhode Island by then. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to hit the ground running uh, within a year and in what's terms gonna, of planning and uh, some of the funding coming in. What's going to keep... Uh, the legislature from going in now and saying we, we need to extend it to cars, we just need more money. Al, I don't know if you noticed, but I don't think they're really hot on the mm -hmm. idea of it, including cars. I, I kind of tried that. And um, so I think that's a safety, and plus the contract with the feds is clear. The covenant says trucks only. Well, I, what I was getting at really is what have you decided all of a sudden that we need more money, we got we to gotta up this thing to that could include cars, and, and I think that's, the contract that's part of the trust it. issue again. Uh, the contract know. with the uh, Federal Department of Transportation has a covenant in that bond agreement that says trucks only. All right. For that specific period of time, correct? 
How long yeah. is that? Contract? Twenty-seven years. Uh, Pretty long time. So whoever's in in power at that point could possibly extend it. Obviously, two cars and twenty-seven. You years. know, we could have <laughs> flying pilotless cars in twenty-seven years. I'm not going to extrapolate there. All um, right. Well, uh, good luck. Uh, we'll wait to see when and how the legislature acts on this. Yep. Thanks. And good luck. But we're, we're not done with you because we have a lot more to talk about. We're going to go to yep. break, but right after the break, we're going to ask about sports gambling, uh, free college tuition. There's so many more topics to uh, talk to Governor Ned Lamont about. So don't go Stay anywhere. Around. All right, welcome back here. We're on The Real Story with Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont and uh, trying to catch up with what's going on in his world and our world, by extension. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you still willing to push for the legalization of recreational marijuana? I don't know about push, but I can tell you that Rhode Island and New York and Connecticut and uh, Pennsylvania and New Jersey all met uh, a few months ago and said, we're all too small to do this by ourselves. Whatever we do, let's do it uh, together in terms of a regulatory framework that's the same. New York, um, uh, Andrew Cuomo recently said he was going to push for regulated um, recreational marijuana markets. So I'm talking to Rhode Island about that as well, and we maybe will try and do something together. By next legislative session, you think it could come up again? You know, maybe as soon as that, but it makes no sense at all for Connecticut to be isolated by itself with legalized marijuana in Massachusetts and New York and potentially Rhode Island. There's and you, you don't want to open that market up to the black market. So I'm interested in doing something, whether it's this session or another time, we'll see. Polls in Connecticut show that there's a lot of support for legalization of marijuana here in the state. I think they're right. I mean, I think uh, the idea that we be isolated by ourselves and the idea that you hand this over to the black market is dangerous. You have no idea what they're doing. You want a carefully regulated market. Uh, how fast this happens in Connecticut? Look, I got to bring people along. I got to talk to families. I got to let them know that um, we're going to do this in a very careful and thoughtful way. What about the experience of Colorado? What have you learned there? I understood that there have been accidents with people high on on pot and uh, maybe other drugs as well, but uh, that this happened out there. And I don't know whether it's continuing to happen, but how concerned are you about that? I, I think just the opposite. I, I think uh, they got rid of the black market. They got lit, rid of a lot of the most dangerous of the substances that the black market was trying to sell. I think their vaping-related illnesses are down. Uh, they've raised uh, some uh, real revenue from this, some of which is going to opioid addiction and treatment and other things. So I think it's, uh, look, I, we didn't have to be the first out of the box on this, but you're right. Uh, we've got 20% um, of the states in this country now are legalizing or about to legalize it. And Colorado is a place where you have a long history you can look at. Sports betting. Um, obviously, this came up last legislative session. It didn't really go anywhere. Uh, we're we're going to see if it comes up this legislative session. Is that on your agenda at all? I think it's important to do. We're working uh, collaboratively with the tribes right now. We have the compact. They've been good partners for us for a long time. They very much would like to have uh, sports betting is at least uh, at their casinos. Maybe find a way that we can do it more broadly. You can have a parlor in some of our major cities. It's, um, I've seen this and a lot of our neighboring states as well are doing this. It's sort of interesting. One thing you may not know because we talked to uh, uh, the leagues. You can bet on success, but you can't bet on failure because that would be open to corruption. You can bet that a Tiger Woods drains a putt. You hmm. can't bet he misses it. You can bet somebody hits a home run. Mm -hmm. You can't bet they strike out. It's sort of interesting. They want to make sure this stays legit. Now, do you feel that the compact requires that at least the tribes are doing this? I mean, the, I think the, if anybody else does it, they have to be doing it. I want them to have an opportunity to do it, absolutely. That, that's the nature of our partnership. And what's the, so what's the hang up right now? What, what's the hard obstacle that you have to clear before? I think this other is people would also like an opportunity to get, get into uh, sports betting. Um, we're talking about the I lottery, maybe Keno, other ways that we can expand this, but do it in a very thoughtful way. But it starts with uh, our relationship with the tribes. Have you had more discussions? with MGM. I mean, they've been super aggressive about doing business in our state. Where does that stand at this point? Yeah, we had good constructive conversations with them. Um, and, and they're watching to see how we how this plays out, um, uh, whether or not they want an opportunity to bid on some of these opportunities. Uh, you know, we'll see. 
Now, what's the status uh, of the tribes with respect to Bridgeport? Are, are they going to have uh, an edge to get a casino in Bridgeport if they want one? Look, I think, uh, as you know, we just awarded a, a big contract for wind power in Bridgeport, which is an enormous uh, right. plus for uh, that uh, amazing city. And, I, yes, I think it's important that there be some, if, if we do with sports betting, maybe there'll be a parlor that's there in Bridgeport as well as some of our other cities where people can go and entertain and, uh, and participate. As you go into this next legislative year, what would you say are some of your biggest goals? I mean, we've talked about a lot of topics here, and, and tolls is, I'm sure, at the forefront of your mind at this point. But what else are you looking at and saying, I really want to get that done? I really want to get that done? We haven't added a new job in the state in 30, 40 years. So I, as a business guy, am laser focused on a job creation, economic development. We've got a great new head of economic development, David Lehman, meeting with every single business in the state, recasting how we do our incentives. You know, there were just too many big giveaways to these big companies in years past, and it didn't really help. So we're doing our best to hold the line on taxes and make you earn your uh, tax credit as part of adding on new jobs. Yeah, let's talk about that. So before, it was kind of like, here's the money if you come to our state. And you're saying there would be much, many more mile markers in some way? Yeah. Please? You say you're going to add on a 500 employees, yeah, we'll give you a credit uh, as soon as you've added on 500 employees. Right. And you earn that accordingly. But also, I think a lot of our existing businesses that were growing and expanded here are saying, what are you doing handing out all this money to these out-of-staters? I'm, I'm earning it every day. So we're trying to keep faith with our businesses here in this state as well. I talked with Joe Brennan last week from the CBIA. Yeah. And uh, obviously, he's very worried, and his members are very worried, especially when it comes to jobs that are going unfilled because we don't ha have trained people here. The trained people are going somewhere else. And anyway, of course, we had this uh, story that, uh, calculating over 6,000 people left the state last year in 2019 alone. How do you, how do you stop that? We stopped that by having uh, the best trained workforce in the world right here in Connecticut. I got a workforce council. I got the 12 leading employers. We got them together with all of our major universities. We're putting together a curriculum that meets the needs of uh, Electric Boat and Stanley Black and Decker, as well as health care, including labor. It's so making sure we're training people for the jobs that are out there right now. There is a global search for talent, and companies around the world are looking for where um, you can find the talent to get the job done. I want them to stop right here in Connecticut. You know, another topic that we talked about, well, not with you yet, but we mentioned uh, to everyone when we first started was the budget deficit. So I mm. want to make sure we get there. What are your views on what needs to happen with that? It's, it's pretty small right now. It's 20 some odd million. I came into office, I inherited a deficit of $3.75 billion. We have a deficit of maybe $25, $30 million. Uh, we can fix that by just holding the line on um, uh, hiring new people, keeping an eye on things. It's not a deficit really to worry about. It, but it's, it's sort of interesting. I, in, I also have a $250 million surplus. Given the nature of the cap, that surplus goes to uh, fill out the rainy day fund mm -hmm. right. and after that to pay down our pensions. So it's not like we're in, in deficit. It's just that money is going to go to prioritize rainy day and pensions. And I'm holding the line on spending. When you look at the pension situation, do you just kind of get a headache? Because it almost looks like there's no good solution out of it. We're going to fix it. Uh, but I can't fix it overnight. You know, it took us 40 years to get into this problem, Jen, and we're going to fix it over the next 40 years. I'm going to uh, make sure that our obligations are a smaller and smaller piece of our budget so that we can keep faith with folks who worked under a contract, who have retired, so they know there are pensions there. But it's also a smaller piece of our budget, because right now it's sucking a lot of uh, money we ought to be investing in the future. I read that you are endorsing uh, Joe Biden for, for president uh, in the Democratic primary and beyond. Yeah, I think and beyond as well, probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, um, he's a good man. We know him. People know him. He reflects the best, I think, of American values. I think uh, he fights for the middle class every day. People know where he stands, and I think he's a, a good um, guy to carry the flag for the Democratic Party, and I think he'll be our next president of the United States. You held a fundraiser for him. Do you know him personally? As I've well, gotten to know him a little politics. bit, yeah. He came and campaigned for me a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. It was kind of amusing, actually, because he was uh, there. He had a teleprompter. I didn't always think of Joe with a teleprompter. 
And then he went off the teleprompter for a while. Everybody's getting nervous as you see the, uh, the guy trying to find where he's going to land. He landed it. He nailed it. And uh, he was a big help for me. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure he's our next president. Well, Governor Ned Lamont, thanks so much for being on the really program. Really appreciate it. For this Al, good to see you again, Jen.